And we're back to Midjourney. Let me show you how I've used it to create logos for companies. First thing that I would recommend is to use logo set in your prompt. So that's the first, you could say, token. It's going to give you a wider variety. Otherwise, you're going to have four examples. So one per image generation, and it's this typical two by two square. But if you use logo set, you're going to have three by three or even more per square. Afterwards, add white background. This makes it easier to select afterwards. Then add the subject and a theme, and then the color palette. Let us start, for example, with a bakery theme and a brown color palette. The word that you use for a subject, it plays a huge role. So if I make it bakery, then baking, and then bread, it's all connected to a bakery, and it could all be used for a bakery logo. Same goes for gardening and garden. It makes a difference. In this case, I'll make the color black green. But let us check our bakery examples first. So bakery is not bad, but it's not the best word for the subject to use. From my experience, it's way better to use a specific subject that you would associate with the company. So baking as a verb isn't the best either. Way better is bread. When you see bread, you instinctively think about a bakery and vice versa. You would expect a bakery to have bread. So this is what I would use. And you can see it gives us good results. There's at least one logo that we could use in these image generations. Here's the gardening theme. Lots to choose from that would make sense. In this case, it works quite well, even if we use garden. But you could, for example, use tree or plants. And this would fit this typical company well. And you can see if I make this a red color palette, we now have the typical garden plant, flower, tree, Logo design, but it's all in red. You can also use this for more abstract jobs, like a graphic design job. In this case, I don't want to have a specific color. Instead, I use a vibrant color palette. You could use monochromatic. You can use abstract, so you don't have to use a specific color for color palette. Let me show you an example where I had to play around. I wanted to create a logo for a dentistry. You want to use something like mint green as a color for the palette, but dentist theme didn't work out well. And here's when I actually found out that you have to use something that's connected to the company, the job, the service. And when you think about a dentistry, it's obviously a tooth or a toothbrush. So this is something that makes sense. Here's the simple dentistry result, and it's totally generic. So you have to be very, very lucky to find something that fits. But when you use tooth theme, we directly have examples here that we can use, and it's definitely recognizable as a tooth. Here's toothbrush. Didn't work out that well. From time to time that happens, but you get the idea. Find something that's strongly connected to the service and the company, and then use this as your subject. Let me upscale two examples to work with. Maybe I'll use number three here for the gardening theme. And here's my dentistry, my tooth subject. I save this image. And now I open, for example, Photoshop, 
or GIMP, whatever you've got. You import it and then you crop it so that you only have the logo selected that you want to use. In this case, I use this one. You can see it's quite pixelated, but don't worry too much about this. I'm going to go to File, Export, we call this Dentist Logo 2, and now we'll use a vectorizer program. I'm going to link to it, upload it. And now we have it vectorized. Make sure you download it as a file format SVG, and then open, for example, Inkscape or Illustrator, whatever you use. For vector editing, import this here, just confirm the defaults and then you can continue working on it. It's a vector now. For example, change the colors or smoothen out the outlines. And then just add a text element. Let's just say it's mine, so break dentistry. And selecting the right font is certainly an art form in itself, but you get the idea. This is how you could do it. Let us go over the next example for the gardening logo. And here we've had a great example where we could use many. Let me just use this one, that's fine. Text is still a problem in Midjourney, so you want to cut out, crop out the text elements because 99% of the cases it's just a gibberish. Pretty sure that Midjourney will find a solution for this in the future, but for now we have to do it manually. Again, it's cropped now. We'll export it, then import it to Vectorizer, download it as an SVG, import it into Inkscape, for example, confirm the defaults. And again, we'll add our text element here. And you can see this gives you clean logos, perfect for these smaller companies. And don't want to have an abstract logo, but a very descriptive one where the symbol, the symbol part of the logo already gives away what the service is. In this case, gardening makes sense to use a plant, flower or tree. As I've said, I'm going to link to the vectorizer. And in general, I hope these tips have been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.